Welcome to a fast playthrough of Resident Evil Village and a chat. While playing through it, I'm going to be talking about some of the other Resident Evil games, going to talk about the things that I missed on my first playthrough of Resident Evil Village, and also just things that I've learned about this game from subsequent playthroughs. Uh, before I get going, I should mention, so after my first casual playthrough here, which had an in-game time of 11 and a half hours, that was played on the standard difficulty. After that, off camera, I did another playthrough on Hardcore, the next difficulty up. Uh, that took six hours. And then I did another playthrough on the hardest difficulty, Village of Shadows, and that took three and a half hours. It took less time, not just because I was getting more used to the game and knew where to go, but a big part of it is that this game has a built-in cheat system, basically. Um, after you complete the game for the first time, you unlock the ability to get points for doing achievements. And with those achievements, you can go to the extra content shop and spend those points on lots of things, especially the most useful one for us is going to be the infinite ammo for the Wolfsbane revolver, which is, or Magnum, sorry, for the Magnum, which is like, you know, one of the most powerful weapons in the entire game. <laughs> So with infinite ammo for that, coupled with the fact that on New Game Plus you get to keep the Wolfsbane from your previous playthrough, as well as all your other equipment and money, it means you get to play through the entire game just with the Magnum shooting as much as you want and you'll never run out of ammo. So with that earned cheat in place, it makes the game a lot quicker. And yeah, this fast playthrough is going to be trying to get one of the achievements actually. It's somewhere in the challenges i'm not exactly sure where um, but there's an achievement for completing the game in under two and a half hours which given that on village of shadows difficulty it took me three and a half hours two and a half hours on casual difficulty is actually totally going to be doable in fact i think it's actually going to be pretty easy so yeah let's play through the game fast let's try to finish it in under two and a half hours and talk about some stuff along the way uh, so i'm going to load the completed data from the third playthrough, Village of Shadows difficulty, but now we're going with casual. Because enemies will have less health, so it'll be a lot faster to get through. Thankfully, we can skip most cutscenes in this game. We'd have to wait a second, though. Did you say something? Nothing. I'll put her down. You have to wait for that, like, fade in to disappear before you can actually. Um, skip anything. And certain small, certain small animations like this. Yeah, like this, I can't skip. That book's too scary for you. But it's just small animations like that. Big cutscenes, you can all skip. Almost there, honey. I learned that if you kick this ball on the ground, that one, if you kick it into the study over there, that's actually an achievement that gets you some points. <laughs> There you go, sweetheart. Don't you... Oh, this again's good. Let's go talk with Miranda Mia. I think this way's shorter. Yes. Skip that. They die. Skip that, and then we wake up in the snow to another phone call. The beginning is a little bit slow, but it's not too bad. Ethan walks very slowly at the beginning. Their cold little mold toes are freezing up in the snow. The in-game time can be viewed from the main menu, by the way. It says 1 minute and 51 seconds. And I found out that if you open the inventory... Well, I can't right now, because we're still kind of in the like prologue area. But um, if you're doing inventory management, time does not pass. So you can actually look at your inventory as long as you want. 
I'm currently playing through Resident Evil 7, the previous game. Um, and I was really surprised going back to that to find out that the game doesn't pause when you open the inventory or the map. It makes it quite a bit scarier in some cases, to be honest. Like... Like, if you're in a boss fight or something, and you run out of healing items, open the inventory to craft more healing items, the game doesn't pause. You're still in danger. It actually adds quite a bit of tension. Kind of fosters more of a mindset of, like, you have to prepare, rather than, like, just reactively crafting what you need in, in the moment that you need it. We have to go disturb a rat in the closet in the basement here. I wish we could just leave the rat alone, but I think we have to bother it. Hey. Sorry. Lycan's dummy thick ass crushed the floor. Yeah, so this little cutscene I can't skip. What did all this? I'm assuming time doesn't pass during cutscenes. I'm not actually sure. Maybe it does during the unskippable ones. Beautiful vista. Can't look at it for long though. Gotta go fast. We gotta go to that person who points a gun in our face and gives us our pistol. Not that the pistol matters, but... But yeah. <laughs> We're gonna be using something much stronger. here it. skip that then we have an enemy hold on yeah so this is all the equipment I finished the game with quite a mess of an inventory huh I actually uh, I should mention this um one of the things I unlocked is the stake which is just a variant of the magnum it does do more damage and I think it fires faster and holds way more ammo but it's not nearly as cool like let me show you It's, it's very powerful, but it's just not anywhere near as cool as this. Anyway, uh, I need bolt cutters. Hope I don't run out of inventory space at some point. That would suck. Oh wait, right, quest items don't take up inventory space. I forgot about that. That's not the case in Resident Evil 7, that's why I was confused about it. In that game, everything takes up inventory space. The inventory is much more limited. Crack. Okay, so this introsec- why did I pick that up? I need to remember not to pick anything up, because there's no point. I have everything I need. <laughs> um, this- This introsection's interesting, because it's basically just on a timer.
I think I maybe have to do that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think I have to fend them off until they kind of leave for a second, and then I can leave. I don't know if... I don't think I need to actually really do anything in particular. I just gotta wait. It's probably fine now. I'm gonna move this. Can I... Nah, I still can't use the door y yet. We do have to wait for this assault to end. Okay, I think we're good now. There we go. Can't skip that. It's over for like a second, and then it isn't. Yeah, okay. So, this section here, the way it works is it's pretty much just on a timer. I watched a, a tiny, tiny bit, like the first 10 minutes of a speedrun of this game. And it sounds like you can manipulate, like there's certain things you can do to make it go a little bit faster, but I don't know exactly what that was and it sounded like it didn't really do all that much. So for the most part, I just have to wait. Which does suck, so I think I'm gonna cut here and just keep shooting them until until the uh, big one comes, and then I'll tell you something new about that. Nope, oh, there's the big one. So, the big one actually can be defeated at this point in the game. It is possible. And there's an achievement for it, actually. There we go, they're dead. It's on casual difficulty, so it doesn't take many shots. Didn't even take that many shots on, um... The harder difficulties, to be honest. The Magnum's really just that powerful. Uh, but yeah, that's not the big one that you see later in the game. It must be a different one because it will still appear later in the game. Guess there's more than one. Uh, but yeah, just gotta keep surviving. For another couple minutes, I think, and then I'll take an arrow to the knee. And we can advance past this section. There we go. Arrow to the knee, we can skip. Now this is unlocked, and we meet the... whatever their name is. Rose is here? Okay, next place to go, or next place we're trying to unlock anyway, is the way to Castle Dimitrescu. We need the two thingies. What are they called? Let's get the first one in the church. Maiden crest, crests. So there's, there's the maiden crest. The demon crest is up here at Louisa's house. So we gotta go through the whole Louisa thing. It's quite quick though when you skip the cutscenes. Ah! This is not fast. Get off me. By the way, I think you can... Yeah, you can shoot those... Those railings. I had no idea you could do that, but I saw someone do it. Keep talking with him. Skip letting them in. Let me knock on the door. Here we have to wait for like 20 seconds, maybe. Unfortunately, we have to wait for Louise to come get us. Oh, let me put this to the number two shortcut. Yes. Oh yeah, this is another one of the weapons you can buy from the bonus shop menu. It's like, um, I think it's Chris's knife. This way. Let's go. Okay, then we can skip, and then RARG! We want them to grab us, then we can skip. Now we need a key for the truck. Get 
that in there. And then we also need the screwdriver. Damn, the fire's moving fast. It's amazing how well I remember this. Uh, truck key. Skip. Zoom through the interior wall. Skip. Run up. Try not to breathe in the smoke. I know. Thank you, Ethan. <laughs> Don't thank me yet. You're gonna be dead. Uh, now you're dead. Oh my god! I just don't get it. Skip. Now we use the screwdriver to open this thing so we can get the demon crest and then go to Castle Dimitrescu. Oh yeah, there's a little cutscene here where uh, I think Miranda... Miranda's killing some... some person. Yes, yes. Death has visited them all. Am I just going to completely ignore saves and never do a save? I guess. I guess there's no reason to save. It's very unlikely I'll die. It is possible, though. But it, it does do auto saves, doesn't it? Castle time. Nothing but blood and death. Huh? Oh wait, sorry, we don't have the castle just yet. Right, we have the get captured by Heisenberg time, actually. Yeah, we go for this. Heisenberg captures us and we're gonna have to run. In just a sec, we have another cutscene. Where we're introduced to all the, the whole family. And my daughters do so love entertaining foreigners. Uh. Furthermore, I can assure you if you entrust them. Now we run. Ah, Jesus Christ! That's right. Run for your life. Very nice, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> My word. You truly are as strong as they say. Oh, you didn't think I'd let you get away, did you? Gotta keep Donna and Moreau entertained. So now it's time for the beautiful, blood-soaked grand finale. <laughs> Nothing like fresh American ground beef! <laughs> Too close. It's just unground beef for you, you freak. Freaks have rose. I love that that's Ethan's favorite insult. It's just like, oh, you fucking weirdo. You freak. Now we can actually open this and go to the castle. Can't skip that. We're introduced to the Duke here, but we don't need to buy a single thing throughout the entire run. Which actually is going to get us another achievement. I think there's an achievement for completing the games spending less than 10,000 lei. So in here we need to get captured. Could Rose be here? And strung up. We do that by looking at the main door that we need to open. This one here. Examine it. And then, there we go. Now we're strung up. Can't skip this part, unfortunately. Sorry. Gotta look. I mean, well, you can close your eyes, but the camera has to look. For, for 
crazy bitches. <laughs> you know, Ethan was thinking bitches, but just self-censored. Ethan's like, no, I will not be like Heisenberg and call every woman a bitch. I'll call them a, a witch. We're locked in here, so we gotta go through the fireplace. Rat friends! I do need that, so I need I need the eye from that. Yeah, it's been interesting going back playing Resident Evil 7, um, which I had never played casually, by the way. I had watched it play be played through a lot. Maybe one... Maybe two times casually? Um, I'm actually going to save the game, just... I don't know, for safety. Yeah, we need to use that eyeball upstairs. Um... Yeah, I'd seen Resident Evil 7 play through one, maybe two times casually, and then I'd seen it play through a bunch in speedruns at GDQs and whatnot. Eyeball goes here. We're gonna have a running away section. <laughs> I haven't cut open a man in a while. Oh, wrong way. Let me string you up, slice your jugular. And just watch. Taken alive, dead, which would you prefer? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> Wonderful master in our hall. Hello. Magnum packs a punch. Oh, honestly, even with the super weak pistol, if you shoot that thing, it will go flying. I think that's something I didn't know on my first playthrough, that you can shoot it. Okay, most of these I can just skip. There's gonna be some in the way. Excuse me. Cassandra caused all this mess. We have our first boss fight with one of the daughters. And she's dead. I th think we need this. Can't skip. Yeah, we need this for the courtyard key. Right. Yeah, this gets used in the tasting room. Which is here. Or the wine room, rather. Wait, that's not the right way. Shall I give you the tour? No, thank you. This is the first door we go through. Yes. 
can't skip. I think we have to watch, yeah, watch him walk up the stairs. I don't think they're really there, though. I think that's just scripted. So I'm pretty sure we can just run and be fine. Yeah, they're gone. And they're like, oh, my daughter. What have you done to my daughter? Sowie. Oh. You just need to look at each other. You need to look over there. Yeah, Resident Evil 7 is quite a different game from this one. Like, I mean, it's kind of similar. Holy shit. Wow, I'm surprised it didn't hurt me. Yeah, I knew they were down there. I shot you! Get out of here! No, it crashes, but we're fine. Let me listen to the conversation. I'm bad at going as fast as I can and talking at the same time. It's quite difficult. Speedrunners, man, like I thought I would develop that skill just by playing casually. But like talking and playing casually and talking in like kind of speedrunning. I mean, it's a bad speedrun because I'm not doing any tricks or tech or anything. But, yeah, trying to just go fast and talk at the same time is really difficult. Don't know how speedrunners do it. Alright, we're gonna have to run away from mommy in just a second. We're about to get our hand cut off. Hand getting cut off. Right now, don't think I can skip. Oh no, I can. You will learn what it means to insult a stunning task. And we're safe. We have to watch this cutscene. <laughs> Running will get you nowhere. Yeah, it seems like they made a lot of quality of life um, changes between seven and eight. There's the whole opening your inventory now pauses, opening the map now pauses the game. Mm. The inventory is much, much less of a problem to deal with. Like, inventory management and running out of space is a much bigger thing in Resident Evil 7. One of the biggest things about it that actually is quite annoying is the fact that key items do take up inventory space. Like, just this castle. a key, just a key takes up an entire inventory slot. Um, Time doesn't pass on looking at the map, so this isn't going to affect going fast. I'm trying to remember where to go next. Uh, do we just go here? Yeah, I think we just go here.
All right, we have the music puzzle. That gives us the iron insignia key, I think. Um, I hope time doesn't pass during this. Yes, Iron Insignia key. Now we can unlock the door up here that needs it. Oh, fuck. Mm. Not worried about dying, I just need space to get past her because she's so big! Ow. Okay, got a boss fight. <laughs> so you finally came. <laughs> I don't want to. Dead. <laughs> I'm sick of bugs. Another mask. Do we need. To go this way and do the bells. I can't remember. Let's unlock this door first. I think we probably do have to do this. Yeah, I was really surprised how limited the inventory was in Resident Evil 7. There are backpacks you can find throughout the game that give you more space, but still, it's very, very um, tight. Which I guess is how it's been in most of the Resident Evil games. Like the remakes, too. I played the remake for 2 and 3, and yeah, in both of those, very limited inventory space as well. So I guess village is kind of a bit of an exception. Don't need to shoot them, it just they're annoying. You know? Did I not kick the ladder down? Oh no, I did. Okay, I have three of the four masks, I believe. Yeah, what's the final one I'm missing? Final one I'm missing is up the main stairs where I ran away from the first daughter. That chased me, oh hi. man thing! You won't live long, even if you run! Yeah, where we first like broke through the floor into the basement area. I need to use... the Dimitrescu key here. And this will also have us fight one of the daughters. The last daughter. Room of terrible performance. I was worried my sisters had gotten to you first. Oh, I need an explosive, don't I? Unless I can just shoot it with the magnum? 
No. <laughs> you need an actual explosive. Um, here we go. Please, I want the good performance again. Let me out. Crazy witch. Ah. We need the animal skull so we can get out of here. I should be able to get out with these. Yeah, and then we're just like right on to the boss fight of Lady Dimitrescu. Hello. The entire bloodline of House Dimitrescu is done in by the likes of you. Anger. Wisdom. Wait. Oh, happiness. Pleasure. Uh, I'm gonna have to kill time here for a second. Oh, that makes her pause. Are you and fix her hat. Playing games. I am. I'm playing Resident Evil Village. And then we get that uh, special dagger that's covered in poison, and we stab them with it. <sighs> Skip. Looks like your outside matches your inside. I don't think they actually take this many hits to kill. Especially not on casual difficulty. I think there must be some minimum time that this fight must take, then it doesn't let you just, like, skip past that, like, first bit, because there's no way they would take this many shots. Okay, now I think we're on to the next phase. Yes. First. You freak. First body part. Uh, looks like I'm getting out of this place. Rose.
Yeah, I was thinking that speedrunning this game must be so much more pleasant than speedrunning Resi 7. Just because you can't skip cutscenes in Resi 7. Hear our voice together as one in reverence. We call on the... Oh, right. This is the key that we need. Yep. Surprisingly, with the unlimited magnum ammo playing on the Village of Shadows difficulty, although it trivialized a lot of things, there actually were some sections that were not easy. Uh, especially the end boss fight was actually very difficult, even with unlimited magnum. Which means without the unlimited magnum, like god, I can't even imagine. Okay, we introduced the buddy part. To the Duke. There you are. I had a feeling. Wait, did we go? No, we don't go there yet. Right, we need the um. We need to go back to the main village and go to the house with the red chimney. Right over there. Have to take a bit of a roundabout way though. We gotta go through this house. <laughs> Hello, Lycan. We need to jack that thing up. Which, the jack is in there, what is it, 07, 04, 08? I didn't need the money. Now we encounter our first heavy lichen. Wait, I don't need to go there. I just need to go here. Don't worry, you're safe, chickens. I don't need meats. Damn it. Better see the Duke again. Yeah, we go back to the Duke, and then we head to the Beneviento estate. Or mansion, or whatever. I guess it's not really an estate, is it? Right, they mark everything on the map. If you truly wish... I guess I'll save just for safety. How are we at game time, by the way? 41 minutes and we've done one of the four 
Was ist? Oh ja. Um, oh, I just want to point out over there. Open up the map. There around the uh, Lone Road area. You know how there's those little like side things that you can go into, and there's nothing really there. For the most part, there actually is a box that needs a key, and I completely forgot about it on my casual playthrough. It turns out that Louisa's key, which you get by examining the treasure here from Louisa's heirloom outside the burned building, uh, Louisa's key is used to open that box, and it just gives you a just a loot item that you can sell to the Duke. So that's one of the things I missed on my first playthrough. Yeah, so the Beneviento thing is like the big the big puzzle area where you have no guns at all once you're in there. The only major area where you only do puzzling. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Resident Evil Village is a lot more action oriented than Resident Evil 7. 7 does have a like it does have a good amount of action for sure. Even... What? But there's even more in Village. Come with me. Can't skip these. There's something I have to tell you. Mia? What's going on? Rose feels different. Moldy. Ethan, you have to fix her. Rose smells... This? Everyone smells me. dank. Even Rose. I don't want to be alone. This can't be real. Oh yes. And the um the plate that I need to put there to get the Beneviento treasure. Am I losing it? I'll show you where we get that from later, but I missed that on my first playthrough as well. Never remember which side of the elevator we get out on. Oh my god, some text will appear that says, Come with me, Ethan. Crepey. Crepey and delicious. Mmm, crepes sound good. Ah, it's this side, the opposite side that we got on from. That makes sense, actually. Yeah, so far, being almost complete, like, I'm, I'm almost, almost complete. I think there's maybe a half hour to an hour left of Resident Evil 7. Uh, I'm just playing it casually, by the way, not recording it. Sorry. But, yeah, having pretty much finished it, I definitely prefer Resident Evil Village. I'm trying to think of how to explain why. Why do I prefer it? Well, definitely the whole key items don't take up inventory space is actually pretty huge. Like, that's a quality of life thing that I really do not... Uh, I did miss playing Resident Evil 7 and do not miss in Resident Evil Village. Like, that should just be the case. A key should not take up an entire inventory spot. That's ridiculous. It's a key. It's just, it's obnoxious. I hate all the juggling of the inventory. But that's, of course, far from the only thing. I'm just trying to think of how to explain the rest. Can't skip this. What? Wait, where's my gun? Okay, we need a bunch of body parts. I 
don't need to take off the hand on this side, actually. That's just a hint for something, but I already know the answer to the thing, so no need. Give me the wind-up key from the leg. And here we can turn on the water, wash off the ring. That gives us the password for this, which I don't remember, so I actually do have to look at it. Oh five two nine eleven. We have the music box puzzle. Why is this here? I'm just lining up the edges first. Yeah, with the edges first lined up, the rest is easy. With that, we can get the little Polaroid, it's like a uh, strip of pictures from the mouth of the Mia doll. Best friend, fairy tale, rose. Best friend, fairy tale, rose, and then probably this order. This I can't skip either, but it shows us the well, which is where we're just about to go. God, I remember how creepy this was the first time I watched it. It really is terrifying when you have no idea what's going to happen. I love this game. It's really good. I am hoping with um, just the trend of going like they didn't go way more action between Resident Evil 7 and 8. Like it's a bit more actiony, but it still has the same kind of heart like survival horror heart. Um, nothing like the change between like the previous Resident Evils and Resident Evil 4, like when it went full action. Like, nothing as dramatic as that. But I'm just hoping that they do stick with the same survival horror heart and don't go full action again with Resident Evil 9 or whatever they call the next game. Do I need to pick this up? Why did I pick this up? That's a waste of time. It's going to ring in a second, but I probably don't need to answer it. Thank you. Hold on, wait a sec. What am I missing? Oh, right, right, right. 
I use the scissors here. I wasn't sure what to do next for a second. Yoinky. And I just have this memorized. It's quite easy to remember. You just one over and then couple over. You know, even in Resident Evil 7, Ethan never turns on his damn light. Like, he's like, I got a flashlight and I never want to use it. It's fine, don't worry. Fake baby. We're about to see the real baby. Yep. About to see the real baby. So go over here and activate it. Hello! <laughs> that delayed scream. <laughs> but I can just run around the other side and I think be fine. We gotta wait for it to pass, unfortunately. See, this is the real baby. I'm assuming it's a one-hit kill if it gets me. I'm not actually sure. Hello. So we need the fuse. Power goes out. The baby appears once we get to a certain point back here, we have to trigger it. Right about here. There we go. We're almost out of here. Last baby encounter. Well, I guess it does try to get us. There's like a scripted sequence where it tries to get us just as we get on the elevator, but... <laughs> I do love the sound design on that creature. I think I went the long way around. Oh well. If 
follow the umbilical cord. Just don't look behind you, it's fine. Okay, now we got the doll section. Skip. Try and find me. <laughs> I don't know if the doll's location is randomized or not. I think first it usually appears over here. Okay, I think it might be randomized. Or, wait, hold on. I think I might have just actually remembered the order wrong. I think it's upstairs. Not over there. Here on the ground? I feel like it is randomized. You know, rather than being randomized, it's also possible it just has a predetermined set of locations for each difficulty. That's very possible. This I can skip. So that's who was behind all this? That makes two. Let me out! Let me out! I gotta go fast! What are we at? We're just we're 59 minutes. Just shy of an hour and we've got two out of four bosses down. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this. In the Moreau section, I I feel like it's probably the quickest. Or at least it feels the quickest. Like, what do you actually have to do for the Moreau section? We run there, we go down the windmill... Uh, something... Oh, right, we take the flask and then, like, escape the goo tunnels. We need the boat key. Take the boat over, get chased... Do some windmill stuff, drain the, drain the water, and then fight him. That's pretty fast. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to show you where to get that um, slab that you need for that treasure. In just a sec, once we get back to the main area. There's a bunch of enemies here on the way out, but no reason to kill them. Okay, 
Can you kill these? No. Save just in case the game crashes or something, I guess. Anyway, two Moreau. Oh, right, we get eaten by... We get eaten out by a wolf. Rah! Dead. Oh fuck, I forgot to sh uh, back in the main area, I forgot to show you where the uh, slab piece is. Well. Hopefully I remember next time we come back here. There's like a- Nah, I'll just wait. I'll remember, maybe. Well, maybe I can, I can explain it here on this boring elevator ride. Um, there are some tombstones in the like main area next to the church in the village. There's one tomb like entombing place that's closed. And after coming back from the Beneviento area, um, one of those tombs just is open now. And if you go inside of it, this lab is just there. So it's not really any wonder I missed it, because it's something that just, like, triggers. And unless you, like, look over an area you've already looked before, you won't see it. Skip. Skip. Run away! Ah! They're trying to trap us. Damn freak! <laughs> what a weirdo! Oh, right, uh, Get out of here. the other way is the boat, but we need the boat key. I don't need to kill any of the enemies here, I don't think. I'm just gonna yoink the key real fast. Another thing that I missed playing through this casually. Uh, there's a boat right there with treasure after we drain the water. After the boss fight, we can come back here and get that treasure. Yeah, I missed that before. I remember right, I think it's also, again, just something you sell. The final jewel that we need um, to put in that, like, Louisa's necklace thingy that took, I think, two crafting components to put together. And we only found one on my casual playthrough. Uh, the second piece of that actually comes... Hmm. I'll try to show it on our way out. But it comes from a whole different thing. Okay, then Chris is in here. 
Now we gotta run away from Moreau. What am I supposed to do? Uh, he said the exit's under water. Let's break this thing off. Seriously? Yeah, if you sprint going off a ladder, you'll just jump down instead of actually, like, taking it step by step. Yeah, I gotta watch out for those instant deaths. I'm not looking to fish for you. Section got me casually too. I'm trying to be fast. Trigger this. Trigger that. Trigger it again. Now we're good. Of the differences between Resident Evil 7 and 8. Resident Evil 7 is a lot slower paced. Everything feels slower. Like the boss fights are, are much slower and more like deliberate and I don't know the character doesn't like. Myself a big one. <laughs> nice one Ethan. Ethan doesn't move nearly as fast. Like just the movement is a lot clunkier and slower in Resident Evil 7.
I think the boss fights in this one are also just a lot better. Like... Yeah, I'm thinking of all the bosses. I enjoyed all of them. I found them all to be really enjoyable and, and well-designed, but... But for Resident Evil 7, there's actually not that many boss fights, surprisingly. The Marguerite one was okay, but kind of annoying because of how clunky it was and being attacked by bugs all the time. Is kind of... it's pretty frustrating and yeah, it just feels kind of clunky and not all that great. The, um, is it the Jack boss fight is the next one? The like, giant kind of fishy okay. thing in the water with a million eyes? Uh, that one just sucks. That one, I do not like that boss fight. I actually got stuck at a point where I had to die. Like, hold on, I'm gonna pause for a second so I can just actually say this. The design of that boss fight, aside from just feeling really slow paced and annoying with the fact that it has, like, its only weak points are these eyes all over it. And they're like above it, behind it, below it. So it forces you to have to move to different areas. Like, you want the boss at some point to be above you and you're below it on the lower level so that you can shoot the weak points that are underneath it. But the movement and everything feels so clunky that doing that just feels awful. And after doing that for minutes and getting the boss to its like final phase where it basically grabs you and repeatedly does attacks to you and you have to just like shoot it in its face until it truly dies. For that section, I actually got stuck. It's designed in a way that it's actually possible to get stuck during that second phase where you're grabbed because Jack will like pull back like they're about to do a hit on you and they give you maybe two seconds while they're like preparing their hit to shoot it. And I like I was out of ammo for everything except a very, very slow reloading shotgun. A shotgun that reloaded so slow that I couldn't shoot them and I was forced to die during that section because I would start to reload for that two seconds while they're preparing their hit and then they would hit me and interrupt my reload and then I would have to start it all over again and I never could complete a reload cycle so I never could shoot it so I just had to die during that section and like manage my ammo differently. It was so obnoxious. Oh, The bosses are a lot better in this one. Uh, orange, white, blue. Orange, white, blue, blue, orange. What? Missed it up. Oh, that one's supposed to be white. Got it. I don't think shooting in here does anything. Oh, that did it. <laughs> The exit's up ahead. In death as he was in life. The exit. Do I need something from in here? I think I do. Is it a key? Yeah. And then Heisenberg is like, blah, 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 blah. and I'm like, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the place up here where you get the Wolfsbane Magnum for the first time is completely extra. Yeah, it's just for the Magnum, so there's no reason to go there at all. Actually, it's not just the Magnum, is it? There's also the ball that you need for the uh, Labyrinth puzzle. But we 
obviously also don't need that. Uh, where are we at? We're an hour and 12 minutes and we only have Heisenberg left of the four bosses. Sweet. Oh, I'm totally going to do this under two and a half hours. By the way, current speedruns, the world record for speedruns for this game right now is around an hour and a half. So that gives you an idea of like where I'm at and where I'm going to be. Like, I'm certainly not going to be better than that, and I'm definitely going to be significantly worse. So I'm predicting I'll probably be somewhere around the two hour mark. Oh, I can show where to get the final piece of the Louisa's necklace thing. Now that we're going by here. Um, can I show it? Um, I'll show it real fast. That body up there. Um, I'll go into the escape menu. You know where you use the crank that we just got from the windmill to open that area that had a yellow gem or yellow quartz or whatever, and it had some chickens? That area, there's something I missed there. There's a ladder. There's a ladder that leads up there. Yeah, you can see it right there. That ladder leads up there. You can walk around that rim and like go up on this little shack. And on that body is the final piece you need to complete that piece of jewelry from Louisa. So I missed that before. Oh yeah, we're going right by it, so I can show you this. Um, this... Ow! This is the mausoleum? Um, wait, why is that not open? Okay, I don't know exactly what you need to do to open that. It's... I guess I missed something of the Beneviento thing. But, yeah, that would be open and the slab is inside. What do you need to do specifically? I thought just completing the Beneviento thing would do it. Do we need, like, the Luthier's key or the go to the gardener's shack or something? I don't know. Anyway, over there is the cannibal. No need to go there. Just bonus stuff. Yeah, we can just run past all of this. We don't need to kill any of these people. Except as needed. Heading into the den. I'll do a save just because it feels scary to not have a save. Oh, I think I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. This must be their den. This is slow!
I don't actually know if I have to kill those to unlock that door, do I? I just kind of assumed so, but I've never tried opening the door. We're gonna have the big guy boss fight. I see the ball snacking in here, having a snack. This will satisfy my curiosity. I've always wanted to know, can I kill the big guy while they're up on that platform? And if I do, what happens to their loot? Can you just not get it? I think you can't kill them up there, because they would have been dead by now. Yeah, I'm going to let them come down. I don't think they drop anything I need. Eat shit. Eat shit and die, freak. In Ethan's mind, there's a whole, there's a whole audience that just claps every time he says his one-liners. Eat shit. And in his mind, he's like, yeah, everyone's just clapping and just being like, yeah, you got him. You told him. Ha <laughs> ha. Where does up there go? Where does down there go? What? What is down there? Hold on. I gotta know. The fudge is down here. Oh, uh, I remember that area now. Never mind. Just a little bonus area. Not much there. Here we come out at the little, like, graveyard thingy. Oh, I believe at this point there's going to be a scream in the distance. Yes! That scream. Okay, remember? I heard that scream in the casual playthrough and was like, what the heck was that? That sounded like a scream. And then I completely forgot about it, ignored it, never came up again. It turns out that is a little hint that there's now a new enemy at an old place you've already been. Um, it's on casual. I should be able to show you this pretty quickly. Right here, there's a super strong version of those lichens. Here, I'll let you, uh, I'll let him come. It's on casual, so it dies really, really quickly. What do you drop? Crystal Ancient Beast. Yeah, so it's a super, super strong version. Like, on harder difficulties, that, that enemy was actually very difficult, even with unlimited magnum ammo, ammo. It has so much health, and it does so much damage. Uh, right, where am I going? Up to the altar. Hey goats, please don't goat me.
It's my greatest pleasure to see you return alive. I think we unlock a memory here. We're like. <gasps> What was that? Yeah. Looking at that cutscene now with what I know is interesting. So during that cutscene we just saw, like, I don't know, I hear a baby. I, you see, like, you're looking at all the people from your point of view. And I don't know, I just didn't really think about it, even though it's pretty obvious if you actually look at it, that what you're seeing is you're seeing through Rose's point of view. And I think that must have to do with the interconnectedness of like the mega mice seed and the fact that you're made of shrooms, <laughs> you're made of fungus. And you know how like the whole fungus network shares memories and like is kind of like a hive mind of sorts. I think that has something to do with the fact that you're able to like have a memory that is actually from Rose's point of view. It's kind of interesting. I never really like thought about it or really noticed that. It's pretty obvious if you go back with that in mind. I mean, you can actually see Rose's hand at the corner of the frame. Yeah, the box that you use Louise's key on is in one of these little sections at the side. What's going on? The factory is the area where I'm probably going to get lost a little bit because a lot of the factory is extra stuff. There's a lot of extra stuff in the factory. Oh, and there's one thing I missed, by the way. Remember, I, I think I casted the ball that you need for the labyrinth puzzle in the factory, but I never actually used it. Well, I'll show you where it is. It's actually it's actually just like Don't worry about the kid. in the main area. Where you use it, I just totally missed it. Just get your ass across the bridge. I'm moving it. I'm moving my ass. Ah, uh, Ethan Winters, welcome. I didn't think you'd make it past Daughter Moreau, but I suppose you survived worse back in America. Hmm? I like you. I'd like to speak to you about Rose. And Miranda. Oh, come on in. Don't worry. It's not a trap. What are you planning? Dead end. Damn it. What was that thing? Get up. Hello? 
Ethan? Try again. Do you want me to pick up the gunpowder? Ethan was like, no, I want the gunpowder. We can't go unless we get the gunpowder. And I'm like, Ethan, we have gunpowder at home. Unlimited gunpowder at home. Ah, shit. Another thing. Uh, this place is messed up. Oh, hold on. Got to get upstairs. Before I do anything else, um, there's an achievement for shooting down one of the, what the hell are they called? I don't know. One of the the monsters from the production line, and you can only do this once per run, I believe. It only lets you shoot down one. We. Yeah, if you try to shoot down anymore, it doesn't work. <laughs> it's very fun, though. Oh, yes, and this door here. So that's the main elevator. That's where you save. That door there is like the one where you enter the majority of the factory. This door here, I never went inside of here, but that's where the labyrinth puzzle is. Oops. Anyway, um, yeah, one major difference between seven, Resident Evil 7 and 8 that makes me prefer 8 is 8 is a lot more colorful. I mean, the factory is quite gray. So where we're at right now isn't a great example of that, but everywhere else is, like, reasonably colorful, you know? Like, not extremely colorful, but reasonably colorful. Resident Evil 7, however, is set in a swamp. Everything is swampy. Everything is gray, brown. Yeah, it's just Swampy Swamp for, like, everything. The whole the whole game. Uh, so I gotta remember what to do. We need to cast that thing. We get the cast, I don't know, somewhere over here. Do we get it over here? Hold on. Doesn't this lead... No, no, this is the right way. Yeah. Horsey mold. Sit back down. Those little orange things attached to the pistons or whatever they are. Uh, if you shoot those, you can stop the pistons. I did not know that on my first playthrough. Although you don't actually have to do that. You can get through them without taking damage uh, without doing that. We need to get the power running. We need to cast a gear, I think. Nothing in there. We go up here.
Yeah, we cast it. Mm. Forwards. Enemy pops out. Yeah, the factory is really confusing for me. It's quite a complex level. that enable? I think we... Oh, I can't go backwards. Oh, Ethan. Such a disappointment. I thought we could join forces against that bitch Miranda. You love calling women bitches, don't you? I don't know about you, Heisenberg, but I like being humiliated by women. I want nothing more than to be free of this bitch. So I need power. I need enough power to destroy her. These are the fruits of my power. The strong will destroy the weak. That's the way of the world. You should have never refused me, Ethan. Got a long way to go. Nah, eh, not really. We're almost out of this place, Ethan. No! I sprinted! Why did you do that? I think that always does that, actually, now that I think about it. That letter's, I don't know, special or something. Miranda thinks we're nothing but children. Oh, she doesn't care for us. You ever just think that all of these miners here are just playing Minecraft in VR? Having a real fun time. It's just like the real thing. Give a shit about your family drama. One hit to kill, my god. On casual, that is so easy.
That was close. <sighs> Soon, she'll start her ceremony with your rose. If that happens, it's all over. For your kid, and for the whole village. But don't worry. I'll stop it. I'll use Rose to kill Miranda. <laughs> Poor Papa. You're the only one who doesn't see your kid's power. Take Rose? <laughs> I'd like to see you try. You have nothing to back that up, Ethan. They've already taken Rose. They already took Rose and separated her into four different parts. And dehydrated her. You have to reconstitute your daughter. You really think, like, that's a good... A good comeback or whatever the hell you'd call it? Alright, we're gonna go all the way back down. Um, the lights are gonna be off going back to the forge this time. We're gonna have those really hard ones. Which I might need to use bombs on. I don't know if I can shoot off their armor with the magnum. Maybe you can on casual? I'm not sure. This is the first time I've played on casual. It's dark. Oh, you can shoot off their armor. for the prop engine boy probably my favorite character design you really are a tough one I love them they're so I'm ridiculous tired time to die you can hear it can't you Someone. wait Did I just kill them? Now stay down. I did. What was that? Two shots to the weak point. My God.
We're about to meet Chris. Damn it again! Hey, Chris. Can't turn back now. I'm coming, Rose. Thing. We got a cutscene. It's our alpha calling. Chris. Ethan's alpha. Ethan? I heard explosions. Oh right, we can skip this part, sorry. Uh then we get our heart ripped out ripped out, and then we play as Chris. Captain, I've confirmed the death of Ethan Winters. Yeah, me and Alta have this whole head cannon that um Share your screen. Chris, Ethan, and Mia are all in a relationship together. Been a while since we fought together, Captain. When was the last? The desert? Doing nothing. But and Ethan loves to get shape. dominated by his alpha, plan. Chris. <laughs> she turned herself into Mia, though. Taking five shots to the head's nothing to sneeze at either. Spooky. Everyone watch for hostile. Bite. Where are we at? An hour 46. Oh, we're definitely going to do this in under two and a half hours. Maybe under two hours. Roger. Uh, 
Make contact with a group of hostile fireworks. Spot the weak fool. Watch out. Roger that. BSAA craft spotted. Two guards. <laughs> I can take them. Don't get cocky. What the hell is that thing? It's all new to my seat. That's probably where Miranda is. Let's go. And ignored. Hey, boss, it's me. Maybe releasing infection to get for support fire. Keep your most sighted a minute. Roger. Tundra here. Leaving some supplies in one of the houses. Umberize, I need some backup. I see you. 200 to the point. Never heard of a mute to my sea colony comes in here Hey, I can eyes on you. Keep going. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um Flash grenade. Everybody just chill. I think this will be faster. Ugh. It might still be faster than killing them all. I just need to get here and then I hit a trigger. There we go. Yeah, then all the ones behind me despawn. Rest of you stay back. <clears throat> Captain, I compared the mold at the village with a sample from the bakers, and uh, there's no sign of the genome editing we saw in the E series. The stuff originated here.
Come on. Good. I'll signal with the locator. Give a guy a break. Thought so. Reloading now. Just a minute. Okay, Captain. I've reloaded. Ready when you are. I'll keep going. The rest of you, stay above ground. So if Miranda was the fake Mia, where's the real one? I doubt she saw any further use for her. I don't get any of this. How did Miranda even know Rose exists? A moldy little bird told her, maybe? We can figure that out later. Focus on the plan. I found it. It's the Megamycete. Captain? I have eyes on Miranda at the ceremony site. Keep your distance. Do not move until I give the order. I know it's too late now, but we really should have told Ethan the plan. There wasn't time. And we didn't expect Miranda to act so soon. Even so, you should have told him. Yeah. This must be Miranda's lab. And we go back to playing as Ethan for the final fight. It's cold. How did I get here? Riding in the cart with the Duke. Heading to Miranda. I gotta go. We'll find a bathroom soon, Ethan. We at by the way one hour 53 oh we're definitely gonna finish this in under two hours you fulfilled your purpose mr Rose. you disposed of my false children and awakened the glorious necklaces now please do not worry for little rose i assure you i'll provide her with two so now you can die peacefully and permanently. Ah, no, now, let's Mr. Winters, I think it's time you left things in my hands. Oh, rest now. The hell I will! Die, 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 die! <laughs> understand your feelings, Mr. Rogers. True. But this is... If I combine Rose with a Megamycet, my daughter will be made manifest at last! I've waited a century. A century! All for this day! For my daughter! Why do you eat a Surely you have no need of now, so close to death. She. <laughs> this is how you end the murders. <sighs> to ensure I never see your face, I will feed you. <sighs>
and that's it. Father's story is now done. Under two hours. I'm surprised how relatively little difference there is between an hour and 56 minutes and the world record of around an hour and a half for speedruns. Considering I'm basically doing a not speedrun, but a fast run where I'm not actually using any real strats. I'm just playing the game casually, but very fast. <laughs> I feel pretty good about that. Yeah, I think I know the game pretty dang well at this point. Oh, yeah, so these are all the challenges we got. Dashing Dad, I think that's the one. Oh, didn't mean to skip all that. Oh, well. Yeah, Dashing Dad, I think, was the one. The, the challenge for completing the game in two and a half hours or under. But I also got a bunch of others. Dense Dad, I think, was the one where we don't spend more than 10,000 lei during our playthrough. And I don't know what the other ones were. But yeah, that has been a fast playthrough of Resident Evil Village. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.